uh, hi Thomas, uh, you represent Norwegian Public Roads Administration and you're holding this event together with Norwegian Communication Authority. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And also okay. the Army and uh, the Norwegian Metrology Office. What's the main uh, goals of this event? What do you expect to see here? There are three goals. Uh, the first is to inform the general public of the dangers of jammers that are could be used for simple tax evasion, could have real serious consequences. The other one is for us as national authorities to learn about the dangers and the challenges with GNSS jamming. And the third one is to give uh, industry a sort of a arena to test their equipment and see what the effects of jamming are. The point being that jamming is illegal Hence, we have to create this arena so you can experience this under real world conditions on real roads in real terrain and not just on your lab bench and in your offices. Hi Nikolai, Hello. you represent Norwegian Communication Authority. Why is the events taking place here in Blake in northern Norway and no near Oslo? There are two primary reasons. One is you see behind us here, the mountains. Uh, it's a beneficial place when it comes to most of the energy where we throw out from the jammer, or mm -hmm. at least the high effect jammer, is in this valley or out into the sea. We don't disturb the land on the other side of this mountain, so they can actually go pretty high up in power without disturbing too many people. Uh, hello, Harald. You are from Time and Frequency Metrological Laboratory, and we are together on this event dedicated to testing the effect of different uh, GNSS interference on various equipment. Most people believe that GNSS is only used in their mobile phone for positioning and navigation. Can you describe the importance or role of GNSS in the timing applications? Well, the GNSS systems makes it possible to get uh, the accuracy of uh, really expensive atomic clocks at very low cost. So it's, it's not a large factor of deploying systems that need accurate timing. So it's used extensively in, in synchronization of, of mobile phone networks. It's used for, for distributed uh, uh, sensor systems where you need accurate timestamps to get the uh, right analysis uh, and, and so on. And it's used for almost all uh, timing applications mm -hmm. will originate from some kind of GNSS based clock, which again serves time to a time server and which distributes it to our networks and so on. Hi, Alexander. Hi. Uh, where are you from? I'm from T2 Space, the uh, Technical University of Denmark. We're here at the jamming test to uh, test out some uh, drone equipment and figure out how the uh, receivers that we are interested in are affected by jammers at different altitudes. Mm -hmm. What kind of receiver are you planning to test? Yeah, so um, our payload consists of uh, two U-Blocks receivers, the F9P and the M8T, as well as a Septentrio Mosaic X5. And um, these are the ones that we usually use in our, our research, so we're very interested in seeing how, how they're affected. Can you briefly describe what kind of interference you're going to test? Uh, here we are testing intentional interference from jamming jammer devices. Mm -hmm. So we are using a high power jammer with a directional antenna placed at the end of this valley. Uh, we also have an assortment of the type of uh, commercially available jammers mm -hmm. people buy online. And then for the spoofing we have some guys with uh, a bit more advanced equipment that they set up inside and they will place an uh, antenna here in a couple of days and uh, mm -hmm. we'll uh, see what they can throw at us. Why are you here? What are you going to test here? Yeah, so, so we are here actually two, twofold. So one is to, to bring along timing equipment and see how the timing equipment is affected by various types of uh, disturbances. Uh, but we're also here to generate some of the disturbances, so the, so the spoofing or simulated signal uh, disturbances. So we want to test uh, how different systems uh, either detect or uh, react to, to these disturbances. Uh, so, uh, what do you think in general about uh, GNSS interference? Is it a big problem for Norway? I'm not sure if it's a 
really big problem and I'm not the correct guy to say that. That's for the national communication authorities. But we are cautious when moving forward into the future. We're seeing more and more of systems within modern vehicles utilize GNSS for different functions in the vehicles. And that can cause trouble for us. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to be ahead of the curve instead of learning the hard way. Genesis jamming problem here in Norway. Is it a problem or actually not? Here in Norway it is a big problem actually and mainly in the northern part of Norway. Mm -hmm. In our uh, northernmost uh, county, Finnmark, we, and the airplanes experience uh, GPS interference not all the time but uh, very often. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, over the last week, it was almost every day. Although that is a bit special, but still, it illustrates the, the severity of the problem. Do you know the source of that interference? We believe it's coming from east of the Norwegian border. <laughs> Obviously from Russia. Yes. <laughs> I got but, it. But uh, yeah, we did measurements back in 2017, and after that, uh, everything is uh, pointing in the same direction. Although we mm -hmm. cannot say for mm -hmm. 100%. So. So you run different spoofing scenarios and even coherent scenarios. Yeah. Uh, can you describe briefly what it was, what kind of signal or simulation did you run? Well, we, we run uh, uh, GPS L1 and, and Galileo E1 simulated signals. And for some scenarios, uh, we use different uh, satellite information and from what, what you get from the live sky. Basically, uh, different start position, different start in time. Mm -hmm. and, and then we also did where we uh, are simulated signals with uh, different satellite information, but actually would produce roughly the correct position and, and time solution. And then we also did uh, what one could call more coherent uh, signal generation, where we used the actual satellite positions and clock uh, data and so on, and generated uh, signals that would cause just a very small or um, jump in, in uh, position and also a very small jump in a timing solution initially. And then we use those as a basis for either manipulating uh, timing information or uh, simulating, let's say, a driving uh, uh, mm -hmm. route starting from a true, true position, which, which you would get both from live sky and, and from our simulator. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share some results? What we see is that uh, simple timing devices will accept whatever signal we throw at them. So if, if it's false uh, or generated signals, eventually they will lock onto the signals we produce. More sophisticated equipment will detect that there's something wrong, mm -hmm. right? And refuse to uh, use the information of the generated signals, or the spoofing signals. But what is also interesting, and, and you've also seen this, is that when you have jamming, so uh, noise that degrades the solution, you get quite large position errors. Mm -hmm. And when you measure the timing error, uh, corresponding timing error, you get quite, quite large timing errors, just because the signal reception and processing is degraded. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not as if you have either GNSS available or not you have a significant effect of, of uh, signal degradation. So it's not obvious, for instance, that, that, that clocks would enter in a nice way into holdover uh, during a, a, just an interference uh, event. Mm -hmm. So that, and that's interesting to see. Yeah. Our system detected quite a big jump in position and in timing during yeah. jamming. Why spoofing? I think for Europe it's quite a theoretical problem co coming from scientific paper not from real life. What do you think? That could be true. Uh, but if we sort of start using road taxation based on GNSS, uh, there could be more of a push towards using spoofing, shifting you to alternative for roads, for example. If the politicians want the main roads to be the cheap roads and the by road to be the expensive, for example, then you could have sort of a reason for shifting your vehicle from one to the other. And the other thing is that the technology and the software are freely available. You do not really need extreme knowledge to be able to create your own spoofer, and that's scary. Okay, so 10 years ago, for conducting spoofing, you should to buy 
for example, Spirant or Arolia software solutions. Right now, you can download a free software from GitHub and run your own spoofer in minutes. Yeah, that can be a problem. So thank you, thank you for your time. Thank Appreciate you for your it. time and thank you for coming and visiting us here all the way up north at 69 degrees north. <laughs> thank you.